Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we will analyze NVIDIA as a company and its stock. We'll show you the financials of what this company makes and where they're going. We'll use our stock analyzer tool in our Everything Money software to show you what you should be paying for NVIDIA moving forward. And if you wanna trade this company at a quicker pace, we will join Mo with the charts and all the trends to make money on the swings. But first, why should you watch this? I bring your questions about this huge company to a couple guys that own and operate over $100 million in real estate, multiple businesses and stocks, and they will help us and guide us through a mindset approach, a value investing approach, whether we should be buying or avoiding a company like NVIDIA. What do you think, Paul? All right, guys, follow us on Instagram, Everything Money Investing, and then follow our three personal accounts. Did a great interview with Mr. Pabrai. Have a great picture on there. I have a great sweater. Just look at it, like it, do the whole thing. <laughs> and it's funny because people are like, why doesn't Paul let me comment? It's like, because I've seen... on on Mo's Instagram account, all the comments there. I'm like, I just, I want this to be at my person. And then I got another message from them saying, you know, your Instagram account isn't what I expect it to be. I think it's a little misleading. And I'm like, no, it's not misleading. I've told everybody, I don't talk about anything investing wise at my Instagram account ever, basically. So NVIDIA is the leading designer of graphics processing units, Paul. You knew this. So back to what I was saying. So follow us on Instagram. However, I'm not going to be talking about anything <laughs> investing. I will be doing solely about my dogs and other useless things. So, NVIDIA, let's go to the um, eight pillar software, our exclusive software. Yep. NVIDIA Corp. Look at this stock. The last year, it had a low of 115 and a high of 346. That's kind of sick. <laughs> Five year on this. Go back to 2017. Oh, geez. Wow, 25 bucks. Uh huh. Yep. All right. $720 billion company. It's a $720 billion company nobody's ever heard of. Pillar number one. We want the five-year PE under 22.5. This one's close. It's 166. That's an X. Pillar number two, we want the five-year return on invested capital greater than 9%. It is 13.7. Not surprised there. That's a check mark. They do a very good job of investing the capital that's invested in the business, which is through debt and equity. Now, a cute little dividend of $400 million. They could easily afford that because right above in our exclusive software, I put our free cash flow. Because remember, guys, dividends are not guaranteed. You have to compare it to the free cash flow. The last five years, they've done $4.2 billion a year in free cash flow. This eats up <clears throat> less than 10%. That, right? that, that comment just shook me, Paul. I'm sitting here dumbfounded. The $720 billion company that no one's ever heard. I mean, the normal person. We, we, we talked about Tesla all the time, and four-year-olds know what Tesla is, and grandparents love looking at Teslas, but this, this is just wild. I mean, Yeah, nobody knows NVIDIA. Crazy. <clears throat> so- Pillar number three, we want to go to the income statement of our exclusive software, and we're going to go look at revenue growth of the last five years. Nine billion to 24. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now keep in mind, look at this big jump right here. 14 to 24 billion for a big company like this. I've got to wonder how much of this is from acquisitions. So I'm going to quickly skip to the cash flow statement on our exclusive software. Please do. Big acquisition in 2020. Yes, they did a big acquisition, $8.5 billion. Yep. So that is why their revenue jumped up so big. I'm on the acquisitions disposition section of the investing section right there. Their first acquisition reported in the last 10 years, $8.5 billion. So keep that in mind. We're looking at the revenue growth. Pillar number four, net income growth of the last five years. We go back to the income statement, scroll a little bit to the bottom. We look at net income, 2.6 to $8.2 billion. You got to like this, Paul. Bam, check mark there. But remember, look at last year. Went from 3.8 to mm -hmm. 8.2. So that acquisition probably helped out a lot. And the market for computers and products for the computer and supplies are very limited. Prices are up. They're probably selling a ton. So keep that in mind as well. Pillar number five is shares outstanding. Guys, a silent killer on investing. We want shares going down so we're, we're not being diluted. Five years ago, they had 2.41 billion shares. Last year, 2.5. That's an X. Mm. So they're slightly, not by much, diluting owners. But 10 years ago, it was about 2.5. Today, it's about 2.5. I'm not as concerned. They seem like they're probably going to be more responsible. Even though this company is extremely expensive, and I could understand them issuing more shares, they are not doing so. We use these pillars to screen stocks. We want to know, do they make money? If we're buying the company as a whole, we will continue with pillar number six, which is their debt. Paul, tell us about it. All right, so the debt. Here's what we do. We go to the main page of our exclusive software. We go to the five-year average free cash flow. Because remember, guys, debt on any company is like debt for you personally. The more debt you have, the more likely you are to go bankrupt. When recessions happen like that, we want the companies that have low debt so they don't get called on them, they don't have financial issues, and they don't have these problems of going under. 
So we take that five-year average free cash flow number, we multiply it by five, $21 billion. So we want their total long-term liabilities under 21 billion. So what do we do? We go to the balance sheet of our exclusive software. We scroll to the bottom, 13.2 billion, check mark there. So just on their average of the last five years, they can pay off their debt in a little over three years. That's pretty awesome. Pillar number siete, Paul. Is it siete? Seis. Okay, go on. Pillar numero seis, cash flow. We want to see cash flow growth in the last five years. So we go to the cash flow statement. And free cash flow, guys, is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. And you can do one of five things with it. You can pay back. You can buy shares, buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, invest in yourself, and pay dividends. Pillar okay? number seven is siete, Paul. Oh, we are in Siete. We are in seven. I thought I we were on you. six. You're right. Duolingo has failed me. I'm please, sorry. I thought we were on six. Keep please, going, baby. Please tell me you Googled the Mexican. No, I'm doing, I'm doing it in my head over here. I'm like, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Okay. okay go ahead. You're right. I thought we were on six. I'm sorry. Googling Four years of Spanish, Spanish, Paul. Don't mess with me. You know this. All right. Uh, pillar number 22. <laughs> All right. So I've added this line to our, to our cash flow statement because I don't want you guys to do the math of cash from operations less your capital expenditures. 2.6 billion to 7.1, check mark there. So they are growing their free cash flow quite considerably. Pillar numero ocho. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. ESPN ocho. Go ahead, Paul. What we want to do here now is we want to we want to get a value for the company as a starting point. We so we, want, we basically want to find a market cap. We want to pay for this puppy. Correct. Now this number doesn't mean it's set in stone, but we pick twenty as a starting point. We take the five-year average free cash flow of $4.2 billion, and we multiply it by 20, and we get $84.2 billion. Oh, dear God. Um, yeah, versus $800 billion. Seven, yeah, seven twenty. dollars Oh, seven twenty. dollars sorry. Yeah, okay. Massive X. Now, guys, it sounds like, oh, Paul, the stock's not going to fall 90%. This is stupid. Oh, there's no chance that happens. Okay, cool. Go do your research about tech stocks in the early 2000s and see which ones fell 90%. Look at stocks in the last 10 years, which ones have fallen 70, 80%. It's possible to happen. At the end of the day, this is just math. Now, here's our eight pillars tab for those of you who don't want to do the math. This is only available in our, in our software. Um, biggest ones here are right there. Valuation numbers. So I look at the saying, now let's go to the stock analyzer tool. Again, the most powerful, the most powerful part of our software, the one that everybody loves the most. Every investment's the present value of all future cash flows. And those present values are all, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We have to make assumptions. So we go to our stock analyzer tool. And we're going to put assumptions in and see what we should pay for the stock today based on those assumptions. Mm -hmm. So NVIDIA, let's go to 10-year analysis. Revenue growth. Uncle Mo. 15, 16, 17. Not 64? Uh, well, I was debating between 15 and 65, but I went with 15. Okay. So why 15? Remember, um, they had a big well, jump in revenue because of an acquisition. Mm -hmm. And they're a large, they're a big company. Um, so we, 15, let's do 15% revenue. Yeah, compare it to what we are at today. Because so what's, right um, now, what's their revenue right now? The revenue right now is $24.25 billion. That would take them to $98 billion. Yeah. In 10 years or seven? In 10 years. In 10 years. Wow. So they would be, what's the market size for the, remember one thing, right now they're currently one third the size of Intel. So do we think that, they're, that their, their revenue is going to be more than Intel's in 10 years for something that's driven more by Intel than by NVIDIA? Do you follow what I'm saying? Like in the nope. PC world, in, 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 the, in, the, in the world of, maybe it is, but I look at it going, let's take out their, their acquisition. Okay. Their revenue growth was well under 15%. Take out their acquisition. Okay, so. Boy, my numbers are really different. Put them in. Mine are five, seven, nine. All right. Because I, again, I want to be conservative and buy companies that are selling from far below that. Let's do this. Let's go with, let's go with Mo on the five. Let's just do this. Let's do my numbers five, in the low 15. and we'll do Mo uh, on the high. We'll do the 15%. Because <laughs> okay. to me, 15, 16, 17 isn't much different. Okay. 
for a company that's this big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're getting lost at home, which sometimes I do during the show, is you have to realize when Paul says conservatives, we want to find a company and then buy it for much less than it's currently valued by the world. That's how you make money. So with so many companies out there, we're going, we want to find those very few, those bangers that we can buy for far less than their, their, their currently priced, which and, this might not be the case. Go ahead, Paul. And Mo and I are discussing revenue growth numbers. Uh -huh. Somebody might sit there and say, Paul, I'm at zero. I'd be asking the same question. My point is, a big chunk of the revenue growth was from the acquisition over the last 10 years. And a big chunk was also from increased demand in the last year for computer products. That alone probably could have led to seven, eight, nine percent of their six of their twenty-one percent. Oh, you were saying someone might say zero. I'm thinking someone might say thirty percent revenue growth. Well, no, somebody might say to me, Paul, if you want to be conservative, do zero percent revenue oh, growth. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm just sitting there saying, I do think the chip market will grow faster than inflation over the next 10 years. And inflation's three to three and a half, four percent. Five, five, ten, and I'm going to go high with with Mo's fit ten and fifteen percent revenue growth. I just don't think that's realistic, considering the last two years have been the biggest chunk of the revenue growth over the last ten. That's where I get a little confused. Going well, it was an acquisition and it was a big chip market, which I don't think is sustainable. Profit margin. Go ahead, Mo. You think the profit margin will stay the same? Probably, probably pretty close to the ten year number. Yeah, my I was going to put twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. Okay. Same with free cash flow? Yes. PE? Um, 14, 16, 18. Not a large company. Okay. And return 12.5% because, again, guys, you can buy an ETF and make 9 or 10%. So give yourself margin of safety and a reason to buy an individual stock. Analyze. So even on most 15% assumption number, 87 says no, uh, price. On my low number, it's 33. And guess what, guys? We came with a market cap times 20 of a 90% drop. What's a 90% drop of uh, 288? It would take us a 28 bucks. I look at it going, yeah, it probably seems about right. I think uninformed people in the comments are going to say, you're just freaking nuts, Paul. I mean, I'm nuts. I'm nuts because I don't think NVIDIA is going to be a $100 billion revenue business in the next 10 years. I guess I'm nuts. The, the point is, if you buy every big company like this based on their best years of growth, you're going to end up not doing very well. I see. That's it. There's 10,000 companies out there make conservative assumptions on uh, conservative, but reasonable assumptions. And I don't think as much as 5% is conservative. I think it's reasonable. The reason we created the software was exactly for this because people watch the videos, want to do their own analysis when they see me do this. So we created the software so people could do this. You get everything you see here on the everything money channel on the everything money page, all our tools, plus all the ones coming up, you get over 30 years of financial data, you get access to Seth Mo and I, you get all the eight pillar analysis, that stock analyzer tool, real estate calculator, retirement calculator, eight pillar portfolio. We can put in 50 stocks at once and tells you how they all look as a portfolio. All of this plus exclusive daily content. We have one, two, three videos a day that we release only to our users of our software. You get it all in mobile form. All of this is available on your mobile app, all for only 90 cents per day. 90 cents per day, if you can increase your returns or decrease your losses by one or 2% a year, that could lead to hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars in extra net worth for only 90 cents a day. Two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com directly is you don't pay sales tax yet because we're not big enough. So sign up, only 90 cents a day. This is a no brainer, less than a cup of coffee. Okay, Paul, if uh, you're looking to trade NVIDIA at a quicker pace, you can join Mo. In the Bidnas Nation, our trading tier of our, our, our community. Mo, what's going on over there with these charts, these confusing charts that are not so confusing if you just watch and pay attention, Mo? Let's go That's for it. That's true. Trading 101 series. So this, I, I zoomed out this far because a lot of people in April going through summer, the Bidnas Nation caught a lot of this run. It was pretty awesome. So we're at all-time highs. And when this started springing up to all-time highs, it was every single day there was a move to the side. And I said, guys... This is going to pull back to this level of about 265 because there's a very tiny gap right here, and we are getting back to that level. It, it basically touched it uh, two days ago. So when you get these flagpole patterns, you get pullbacks. It just happens that way. Same thing would happen with Tesla. Right now, if you wanted to, this is how, what I would tell you to do. Come over here on a daily chart. Look where we're coming into the sweet spot. I would wait until this thing moves right into the sweet spot, Get some engulfing candlesticks. Go to these all-time highs. Just grab a couple dollars out of there, and that's actually a pretty big move. And that's how you make money on this right now. More so than that, even easier, you can come over here on a 15-minute chart and learn to day trade this. And, Paul, I think we might we should think about putting this in our day trading portfolio because you get a lot of movement on this. Yesterday, you got a big move at the end of the day, and today you could have shorted this in the 
11 o'clock hour, and you could still be in it right now because your stochastic is still moving below 20%. You're getting good selling volume, and you're getting these engulfing Whoa, candles. really? You'd still be in it? What's yeah, the price currently? So we would have probably entered here at um, 2. Hold on. Let me look on. So here. keep in mind, guys, when you're watching this chart. 290, it's not even close to the beginning of the fall. And that's the great thing about chart reading. You're not going to get the high. You're not going to get the low. So 290, what's it at currently? It's, right now, it's at 84.75 and still coming down. And, and our stochastic down here is at 0.74%. That's so, a 2% gain so far, and we're still in it, guys. And we're still in it. So Mo, Mo, you, Mo, here's a picture of you a month ago with your frowny face, uh, unsupported flagpole pattern here on this rise. On, uh, on uh, <laughs> NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Yeah, I hear you are saying that. So, so that's, funny. Uh, that's so funny. Let's go back to the... The, the long-term chart and look. If you're interested in trading, Paul has started a new series where he's putting up $500,000 of your own money to learn. Is it momentum training, Paul? Or no, uh, day, day trading. trading with, so, so stay tuned on the channel as Paul trades a half a gajillion dollars. Go ahead, Mo. There you go. There was, that, there was that rise and here was that fall. It came right back down. So if you wanted to do it, make it more accurate, there it is. So that's what happens. But there's different ways to trade this stock. This is a very good stock right now because it's so volatile. It can give you that give you those big days of gains, big days of losses from a day trading perspective. So if you want to learn how to day trade, if you want to follow Paul and myself on his little day trading journey, come and join the BidNast Nation. You get the Trading 101 series, which gives you all of the rules that you need to be successful. The Employed Trader series, which is six stocks that I go through every single day with you and give you daily updates. My exclusive monthly Saturday seminars in the Discord community of 950 plus people. That's our take on NVIDIA. Fondle a thumbs up, join the community. You're going to love the software and we will see you when we update this stock next. Watch more videos. We love you. See you next time.